Hello and welcome. I'm Hi C, and this is Toku Rev, your introduction to Tokusatsu movie and TV shows to help you decide what you want to spend your time watching. Welcome back to Halloween for the next step in the Garo franchise with Garo Red Requiem. Garo Red Requiem is the first full-length film released in the Garo franchise, filmed exclusively with 3D cameras. Of course, I was only able to watch this in 2D, sporting such catchphrases on the posters as, A Golden Knight Runs Through the 3D Magic World, or The Golden Knight Runs Into the 3D Hell, or A Golden Knight Runs Through the 3D Demon World. I'll let you pick which translation you prefer. Featuring its own standalone story, you don't need any prior Garo experience going into Red Requiem. So if you are a first-time watcher and interested in dipping your toes into the Garo waters to see if it's something you might be interested in, but don't want to commit to the 12-episode series, this is a newcomer-friendly jumping off point. News spreads as one of the ancient apostle horrors, Karama, has been devouring people's souls. Apostle horrors serve as a higher-class threat when compared to the basic horrors seen throughout the Garo series. More deviously guarded, they tend to trick and lure their victims opposed to cornering and devouring them. They have more adaptive forms, regenerative abilities, and will consume other horrors to power themselves up. Three Makai priests, Rika, Shigoto, and Akasa, corner a horror in a back alley when they are outmatched. When luckily, Koga shows up after being told by a watchdog group to help them take out the horrors. Koga is the only pre-existing character to appear in Red Requiem leaving the Makai priests as the supporting cast. Shigoto is a priest in training, positioned under Akaza. He is more trusting and open than either of his fellow Makai priests, keeping the group grounded and down to earth. He is a mediocre fighter and spellcaster. Akaza is the lead priest who owns an antique shop. The basement is used as a headquarters for the area's hunting. He is a quiet, collected mentor character, helping both Koga and the rest of the priests by equipping them with weapons and artifacts to help fight off the horrors. And then there's Rika, an angry young female priestess who is upset that Makai knights can only be males. Losing her father at a young age to Karma, she has harnessed her rage and directed it at fighting off horrors. Often brass and jumping too quickly into battle, unwavering in her arrogance, forceful and dismissive of Koga's presence, claiming she has no need for help from a Makai knight. I would argue that Rika is the true main character of Red Requiem. She's strong and interesting, giving her a lot of growth throughout the movie. Learning of the terror that Karma has been causing, Koga and Rika search the city looking for clues. Koga trying to use Aruba, Koga's sentient ring as a guide, but he can't sense any traces of horrors, eventually bringing them to the nightclub Crime that has been sealed away with the kind of magic that only a Makai priest could have conjured. Inside, you learn that Karma has two helpers, Karusu and Xian, who've been tricking young girls into looking into a haunted mirror, showing them a version of their greatest desires, trapping them inside the mirror while Karma awaits them, shattering their souls into pieces. Neither Karusu or Xian have a lot in the way of outward personality personalities, seeming like the crowned goth prince and princess of the underground ball. They work great as stand-in foils for both Kuga and Rika, acting as if it was a mirrored bizarro world version of each of them. From here, Kuga and Rika investigate Karma while being assisted by their fellow priests and finding off Karusu and Xi'an, revealing a plot of betrayal, sacrifice, and acceptance. So. Let's talk about production. When I watched Garo Red Requiem, I didn't know that it was filmed and released in full 3D. That sounds like it would have been a really fun way to experience it, and once I knew that, I could reflect and imagine how some of the scenes could have had a bigger impact if they were actually leaping off the screen, but it never made me feel like I was missing out by watching it in 2D. However, I think this led to the decision to not use the Garo suit but instead have a computer-generated stand-in. In the Garo TV series, there was always the use of both the practical suit and the computer-generated one, but here, all of the Garo suit scenes are 100% CG. In the last two Garo videos I've done, I've made comments on my distaste for the way CG is used in Garo. Well, this is movie Garo with a slightly bigger budget and a different story to tell. So overall, the CG is better than in the TV series. When I think back to the clown or the giant teddy bear in Garo, it makes me appreciate how not that this movie is. The CG is still jarring and can rip me out of the heavily used trick photography and clever edited action scenes. But the Garo suit is only on screen for two scenes out of the movie and both times it is fighting another CG creature, so they kind of blend together. When they are in front of a live environment, it's a little more unsettling than when they are just in a fully computer-generated world. 
As for the monsters themselves, their models are much better than anything previously seen in Garo. With multiple move-in limbs and a decent amount of texture work and atmospheric lighting, it's far from perfect, but for 2010 standards, it is competitive. And I doubt the newer Garo series will have the luxury of seeing the better designed monsters. However, that only includes the computer modeled monsters. The monsters that are made with practical effects, I have a bit of an issue with. In both the TV series and Beast of the Demon Knight, I always love when tricks are done to make people look monstrous. And I absolutely loved when they would use puppetry or prosthetics. But in Red Requiem, all of the practical monsters are just boring. Like, all of these guys just look like some dudes in cheap Halloween costumes and nothing feels creative to me. They serve their purpose as just being creatures to get in the way as they fight towards the main event. But when every other visual in the movie felt like it was being pushed to a higher theatrical level, these Foot Clan type enemies just feel disappointing. Compared to Beast of the Demon Knight, the particle effects on spellcasting feel better blended into the environment and didn't give me that uncanny feeling. There are more than a few gratuitous breast shots sprinkled throughout the movie. I know Gara was adult focus, but in the TV series, whenever nudity was on display, I felt like it was less highlighted than this whole, hey, check out these boobs kind of thing that they're doing here. I'm not offended by it or anything like that, it just felt unneeded. When it comes to the foley work and environmental sounds, it sometimes felt like scenes were just very quiet. You would have sounds of movement, walking, punching, and a few crash sound effects, but the rest of the audio design just felt very small to me. This could have easily had something to do with it being a theatrical release and having a surround sound mix while I was watching it in stereo. I haven't investigated it further, and it's definitely not a deal breaker, but it was something I noticed during my watch, and not something I've noticed during the TV series or Beast of the Demon Knight. The fights themselves, however, I feel have grown a lot from the TV show. As I said before, the Garo suit is only used in two scenes, leaving most of the fight scenes with an untransformed Koga. I love this. Between Koga, Rika, Shion, and Kurusu, I don't need a live-action Garo suit. It's just nice to see them break glass or jump around the set on wires. There is a fight scene inside of the crime nightclub that's easily the visual highlight for me in the entire Garo series so far, fighting through waves of gothic Japanese nightlife to save the city. The action feels bigger and better than ever. Recommendation time. Say you have watched some Garo here and there, and there is just something about it you don't like. Should you try to tough it out and sit through Red Requiem? No, absolutely not. At the end of the day, this is still Garo. A lot of the people I know who love Tokusatsu do not love Garo. But then again, a lot of people I know do. Garo is a weird flavor. It's dark and definitely has a tone you won't find in Super Sentai. I think at times that tone can come off as a little bit pretentious or cartoony. Whenever I hear about anything that's typically family friendly, but now targeted at adults, I always get worried. It's not adult in any way that younger viewers couldn't understand it. It's dark in the same way that a heavy metal album cover can be. And I love that about Garo. But I also understand why you might not. If you're someone who's watching this and wondering to yourself, I don't know if Garo is a flavor I'd enjoy or not. Watching Red Ruck Room without seeing the original Garo series or Beast of the Demon Knight is definitely a good way to go and test those waters. As a Garo movie, I think it's really well done. As an intro to the Garo universe, I think it's very inviting to new viewers. But what about those who just want a movie to watch and are not worried about the greater Garo universe? As an entity unto itself, it has its own legs. It's well shot, well acted, and well executed. It has a small cast, and while you don't do a deep dive into every character, they are fleshed out just enough that you understand their motives, desires, and personalities. You learn just enough about the Makai world without it becoming overbearing by beating you over the head with exposition, with a snappy pacing that doesn't feel too slow or too fast. So whatever your reasons for investing your time in Nagara Red Requiem, new fans, old fans, or just a casual movie watcher, I say, give it a watch. Thanks for watching. I'm Hi C, and this was Toku Rev, your introduction to Tokusatsu movie and TV shows. 
Happy Halloween! And if you haven't yet, I encourage everyone to go out and watch my videos from the last two Halloweens on Garo. The first TV series, and Garo, Beast of the Demon Knight. If Garo is or isn't your kind of thing, leave a comment and let me know what draws you into it or pushes you away. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Toku Introductions.